emails that I sent out. So let's go through this. Um, the kind of the primary purpose of this little topic is to talk about what is Java and then look at some of the the platforms. Um, since you guys have all had a little bit of exposure and uh, have some background in Java, um, yes. we, we should be able to move through this pretty quickly. But we're going to look at the components of the Java platform. We're going to talk about what the runtime environment provides, and then we'll understand. We'll, we'll look at the three different Java platforms that exist. So the first thing is, uh, what is Java? And the reason that this is important to cover is that depending on the marketing you get from Sun, or from IBM, or from Oracle, it's a little bit convoluted. So I like to describe Java in, a t in terms of two different things. Um, the, the platform or the operating environment for Java applications. And when you install Java, whether you did the RPM or whether you did a, the EXE from Sun, it installs what's known as the Java Runtime Environment, or JRE. Um, and then the second piece is the language. So the distinction here is that um, in order for me to actually run a Java a Java application that's built in the Java language, I have to have the Java platform, which is very different than the C++ world or the C world. As far as, and we'll get into that in more detail, as far as the uh, language is concerned, there are a bunch of different characteristics that Sun came up with when they designed the language to address things like security and reusability and transportability, um, threading, so on and so forth. We're not going to really get into that in our um, the context of our class over the next two days. But if you wanted to, you could go read the specification, and in the first part of the specification, it's going to talk about why you would use Java over something else. As far as the, uh, the platform goes, um, the way that the platform is structured is in terms of two different components. Um, there is the runtime environment, and the runtime environment really is what you and I would call the Java Virtual Machine, or the JVM. And then, that, and then sitting on top of the runtime environment are the necessary libraries. So if you, if you have some familiarity with um, terminologies and marketing terms, Java SE has a set of core libraries that provides the Java runtime platform, its execution environment. So I've got the virtual machine, and layered on top of the virtual machine are my libraries, and layered on top of my libraries are my application. Um, as far as the, the runtime environment goes, you know, some, one of the Sun, Sun's big selling points is that Java is platform independent, so this write once, run anywhere concept. That's true from a language perspective. Um, but it's not true from a platform perspective. And, and what I mean by that is that the virtual machine that you installed on the Linux environment is different than the virtual machine that I have installed on my Mac, and it's also different than the virtual machine that's installed on Windows. So really, if you were to dissect the virtual machine um, on those different operating systems, you would find that there's a portion of the virtual machine that's written in Java, and then there's another portion of the virtual machine that's written in C and it's the C code that makes the virtual machine operating system specific. Um, the, only, the only reason that that is somewhat important is that at one point in time, kind of 95 through 98-ish, um, the virtual machine exhibited slightly different characteristics on different operating systems and that's because of the, the what's known as a native peering structure. So back in, back in the early days of Java, when I started working with it, I, I very much encourage people to test their application across every single operating system and identify any anomalies and then address those. Um, today, like when we're working in the Java EE environment, there will, there will be some anomalies or some differences between application servers, but at the at the operating system level and at the virtual machine level, those anomalies are much less than they used to be. So cross OS testing is not as important as it used to be. It's still important, but it's not as important. It's not as critical, I should say. 
So as far as the virtual machine goes, um, the virtual machine, we've kind of talked about this a little bit, but the virtual machine's responsibility in terms of the Java platform is to execute bytecode. So when I take uh, something that's written in the Java language and I run it through the compiler, instead of the compiler generating um, assembly code or instead of the compiler generating binary, the compiler is going to generate bytecode. And it's, for the most part, bytecode is the machine code for the virtual machine. Um, the bytecode, the bytecode is kind of um, its own language to the virtual machine. It has a small instruction set. So theoretically, if you wanted to, you could go out and build your own virtual machine if you understood what the bytecode looked like. As far as the functional role of the virtual machine, it's really the, the facilitator between the job application and the operating system. And the, the key thing here is that if I were to change operating systems, um, theoretically I would not have to go back and, and recompile or redevelop my Java application. So comparing that to something like C++ where I compile it down specific to the operating system and the hardware, anytime I would change the hardware or change the operating system, I may have to go back and recompile that C++ application. So there's the, the key thing to say there is that the virtual machine provides a layer of abstraction between the operating system and the application. And then um, the last thing to realize is that the virtual machine really provides this execution environment. And uh, there are a couple of different execution environments out there for the virtual machine. Um, one is, it's kind of the most most prominent one, one is the standalone execution environment. And in the standalone execution environment, what happens is that you just spin up the virtual machine. Uh, the virtual machine runs an application, and the application controls a complete life cycle of itself. And then there are other, there are other environments, execution environments, and, and really they're just constrained representations within the virtual machine. Um, the product that we're using, ReadyTalk, is written as an applet. Applets have very distinct execution environments. Um, really what that means is that the virtual machine controls the life cycle of how the applet runs, when it starts, when it stops, when it's, when it's available, when it's not available, things like that. And web starts really an extension of, or a better way, a better representation of applets. So we're not going to go through applets and web starts um, primarily because in the Java EE world, my guess is that you guys will be developing most of your um, applications around JSPs or JSF files. 